What's up, everybody? Welcome to another episode of the Masters of Sport podcast. I'm here with my two-time co-author of the year on two of my books, our books, Sports yeah. Performance Bible and Parabolic Periodization, Earl Kunkel. I'm glad Earl. you got your pronouns right there. <laughs> oh, and also, if you're watching on YouTube, make sure that you like and you subscribe to the Masters of Sport podcast along with Peak Strength and the Garage Strength YouTube channel. Dane, I believe you're supposed to start saying how I also set an American record in uh, the Masters. And at Earl, class former American record holder of 126. It was only 123. 123. That's my best in comp, though. In comp snatch. 123, so that's 270. It's like, it's like exactly, 77. Yeah. Something like that. I think it's one of the weird ones. It's like it might even be an exact number. 278 i don't know yeah. my math isn't well i like to remind everyone all the time my favorite number is the square root of negative one negative one <laughs> no it's not what is it it's i it's an imaginary <laughs> number i'm just glad you can learn that dane so we're talking about endurance training specifically lsd i'm hard micro dosing right distance now. <laughs> and hit training your high intensity interval training. I like hitting LSD. Yeah, <laughs> man. I feel like I read on Twitter like FDA just approved like MDMA uh, yeah, and yeah. psilocybin for like not even clinical trials anymore. But like for actual, yeah. Within two years, it's yeah. like, hey, we're gonna use this to treat addiction and PTSD. I think mm -hmm. it's pretty neat stuff. I think it's PTSD is a big one. Yeah. I think that's an MDMA one. I, I there's some recent Netflix documentary about that, like how to change your mind, and it talks about that with a Michael um, Pollan did a whole book on that, like like remapping your mind. Yeah, that stuff's cool. Yeah, I neuro. It makes me think from a training standpoint, like neural drive and like how your body communicates, something like that. I I don't know. Well, I was you know talking about this. Is you can't go off topic too much, Dane. I'm not going to, but but thinking <laughs> about remapping my brain, I've been literally when I say I'm hard on LSD right now, like I've been pushing that long slow distance hard, uh huh, because I want to do 500 calories in 30 minutes on the assault bike, and I lit literally am changing the way I think while I'm training, okay, and how I approach like the suffering of endurance training versus how I could handle the suffering of of like intense uh resistance based training yeah doing a one rep yeah it, it really so it's you literally have to change your outlook yeah it's like constant pain and sorrow yeah. <laughs> <laughs> versus like a one shot it's like my life versus like uh... yeah, yeah. <laughs> one event um so we're talking about endurance training you're giving some personal things here i do have this little anecdote about uh one summer like I decided not to train my endurance at all. Yeah. And when I showed up for like, it was like football camp, I think like as a skill position, the, the requirement was to run a mile under 620. A, a, a great uh, judgment of skilled positions. Yeah. I know your thoughts on this, so you could weigh <laughs> in on this. But I, mile. I decided I wasn't going to train it. We're not going like, to test you to run backwards or how, how you yeah. cut. Well, it was the conditioning part of yeah, it. Yeah, right, right, yeah. They yeah. might have been better off actually, hey, we're going to have you run a sprint every 45 seconds, right. and like we want the sprint under this time. That that might have made more sense. Yeah. Anyway, sub 620 mile, I decided I'm not training for it. I don't, not about and you it. you ran a sub 620? I ran a sub 620. I don't with, know if I've ever run under like an 830. With no training. Mile. And this is when I was actually like young. Yeah. Like, not young, young, but like. Well, and this is to to me, it's like okay, you never train. You're in a six twenty sub six twenty, and you also snatched one twenty three when you were like ninety years old. Yeah, athlete so, terms like I was retired. I should have been retired. So in reality, you should have been a professional CrossFitter by the age of twenty. The sport did not exist yet. It's I like think it's or like, it just started probably and wasn't a sport yet. It was like a a methodology they were. So you sound out. like one of those old guys in the early two thousands. I did not UFC. say this. You said this. <laughs> I do not claim. I've tried CrossFit and did horrendous. In those the guys in the bar being like, "Oh man, you know if UFC was around when I was coming up, I would have been in that." Yeah, not me. No, no you wouldn't have. 
It, that's uh you got the past on your breath my friend <laughs> <laughs> right like just keep it away go brush those teeth glory days like i don't think bruce springsteen's celebrating him homie i think he's kind of jabbing at you but hey if that's where you're at roll with it roll with it oh, man that's pretty good yeah brush those teeth clean in the past events so yeah, that was it that's all i did humble brag yeah no i, th I think that's pretty good and i yeah that's we're going off of what you said like dude i was a kid who was the last kid in line for endurance work when we run oklahoma's like suicides and stuff uh -huh. like that for football i would pretend that i had contacts and i had to get my contacts because they fell out or something like i would <laughs> never now if we would run sprints like 10s 20s 40s i was crushing them you were all in on that so that's where that the lsd stuff like the anything i think 30 minutes or more to me would be long slow distance and that's the stuff where I really struggle. But lately, I think as I'm getting older and I realize, like, I do believe it has some health benefit to longevity. Yeah. Dude, that stuff, it's it's brutal. As long as you're not running. <clears throat> uh, yeah. I, I, it makes me think of... Uh, um, and all and, you runners out there, keep running. Enjoy yourself. Do it. But, but it makes me think of Matt Frazier, like, where, where he basically spent two years every morning doing LSD stuff lsd work on a rower for like an hour every single morning to try and get that capacity deeper and deeper and deeper and it's like it is actually like you've got to totally flip the switch but then the more you're on it you get more and more comfortable with it and right I think that's like the uh that's the interesting part and i also think there it it does have a a, a good transfer over to getting in shape it does help with with recovery for other sports yeah the lsd stuff um i'm just gonna talk some crap on running real quick i love and I, as someone who enjoys running like legitimately like hey you want to go for a run i'll probably say yeah to you and go do it i have never felt so much pain in my adult life training than i have than when i started run trying to run like half marathon type yeah. distances my feet killed me. My ankles killed me. Um, it could be because I was new to it as well. But I at the same time, like, dude, look at old dudes. My ligament, like, I squat all the time. My yeah. ligaments can handle things. I, I think it's like, look at, I, I also am in the boat of I don't want to be too negative against running. But if you look at older guys that have been running for like 40 years versus older guys that have been lifting for 40 years. There's dudes that have been running for 40 years, and they could – like my college coach, Harry Groves, ran his whole life distance runner, like 10,000-meter guy, was coach of the in the Olympics in Tokyo actually in 64, 68 in, the Mex in Mexico City. And uh, he was really old. And, uh, dude, his last like 15 years, he could barely walk. Yeah. Like literally could barely walk. All that doom, 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 Yeah, there's doom. so much pressure. There's so much force – and that's the thing I think that distance running now, I think it's going to change because they do value strength, like resistance based training and how it can keep you healthy. But back in the day, like when, when coach Groves was coming up, like nobody lifted anything. So all those guys had to deal with that crazy force that you're dealing with when you're actually running. And then that leads to the, the crazy, you know, ankle knee, lower back, Gets or destroyed or my favorite example and i'll use my wife actually suffered i think it was a stress fracture from nothing other than just volume of running yeah yeah like and she's not someone who's trained but was like hey i'm gonna start running and ended up being injured in that capacity right just from doing it yeah not doing anything wrong right. i guess maybe her volume was too much too soon right but at the same time it's like why is that happening? <laughs> like you can, you can walk the same distance and in a sense, you're doing the same amount of work. Yeah, Maybe yeah. it's not as fast so that your heart's not burning as much calories, but, it's, but like it's still, the difference is minute. Especially when, when you're relating it to longevity. Yeah. All right. I think that was good. We stuck to off topic, but stuck to the topic. <coughs> so is that our intro? Yeah, that was our intro. Where was yeah. our, Where's our time for that? Yeah. Where are we at? How are we doing? So you actually ran overtime. But <laughs> so yeah. Jason, Jason's really <laughs> pulling his. <laughs> but the thing is, I felt like you were. Still yeah, we were on, still we were on topic, so we're good. Uh, <laughs> part of the podcast, so 
All right. Way to Yo, go. You've got to give us those those yeah. cards, Jason. We're running a professional podcast here. Yeah. We're trying to step up our game. <laughs> Thanks for the encouragement. Yeah, thank you. For, we I, appreciate, I appreciate you. appreciate that. All right. Can you say in the mic there at minute like? At minute 13.40. All right, there we go. So what are we doing now? We're talking about mitochondria now. Ooh. I'm, Can I, I go I'm off just... topic real quick? I just want to make a, a pop culture reference. We don't have to go into it. I've, there was this game. I think it was on PlayStation. might have been PS2 called Parasite Eve, and it had all to do with the mitochondria. I remember that. like some, their, like Their ability to form energy. There's Yeah, something like that, the story. That's all. That's just all I was thinking about. Um, I think about saunas. Educate me on mitochondria and how you do all your endurance work by sitting on your butt in a sauna. I'm <laughs> kidding. <laughs> uh, okay, so think about... Uh, I'm trying to relate it to like muscle size. So Okay, so think about mitochondrial volume would be like big muscle okay okay so like your tricep yeah yeah exactly okay correct now uh mitochondrial yeah that's also accurate <laughs> mitochondrial <laughs> respiration think about extremely explosive like like so if i'm extremely explosive uh and i have a big tricep I'm going to use that tricep. I'm going to have a lot of force coming out of that. Okay. So what happens with mitochondrial volume is that if I do long, slow distance, or if I sit in the sauna, it, it mimics because of the, the raise in your heart rate, it mimics mitochondrial development. So you have more of that, more volume. So then you have these, you have more power plants so that in theory, and it, research supports this for the most part that then when we are doing um high intensity work or sprint interval work our mitochondrial mitochondria will respirate more effectively so they'll develop they'll create more atp and then the atp is then used to fuel your muscle to to okay have action i wanted to ask or like go back a little when you're talking about the sauna is it the heat that goes up that makes your heart raise or is it the idea that when your body is exercising your like temperature raises so you sweat and it mimics that I, state I don't think that they have a I don't think that they understand the mechanism okay I think I think that it's a lot of like they know your heart rate goes up in a sauna they know that that it is very likely mimicking LSD work but they don't really understand why it's just like when you're sitting in the sauna. Yeah, so it the is cause, probably, the trigger, if yeah, you will. Yeah, it is probably related to your body and the heat and trying to acclimate to the heat. Yeah. Uh, and, and trying to work in that regard. But I, I know I could get in the sauna, and if I'm in there at a hot enough temperature for a long enough time frame, I can get my heart rate to like 140. Really? Which, yeah, which is then – and that's the thing with LSD work is like – if I'm doing 30 to 60 minutes to 90 minutes of, of just like real steady state cardio, I'm going to develop this huge foundation. And then, you know, if you periodize your, your endurance work accordingly, when you're doing your sprint interval work or when you're doing your high intensity interval training, your body will be able to use that more effectively. Now, the only thing is, is that uh, you know, in, in CrossFit, they'll call it the engine, developing the engine. So if you think yeah. about developing the engine would be the long, slow distance, but you've also got to be able to execute high intensity and sprint stuff so that you can actually learn how to tap into you that respiration. Rev it up. Exactly. <clears throat> it's like, it's the same principles as doing hypertrophy work and then improving the innervation of your, of your muscular structure to make it more. Okay. Efficient. Yeah. It's fire and more. Yeah, do we, I like that. I learned something today. Sometimes I'm just like, oh, I I feel like I already knew that. Maybe that's my ego talking. And I'm like, <laughs> oh, I'm so smart. Blah 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 blah. Yeah, maybe that's what happened in those interviews. Earl. Yeah, what? Let's not bring that up. Oh, man, burn. <laughs> I did. I did reasonably well, especially for like, whatever. I'm whatever, gonna, you big jerk. Yeah, you're a meanie. You are a meanie. All right. So we got LSD. What it is. When do you do it though? When when does that happen? Like LSD? Yeah, not and not like Friday Grateful Dead not Grateful Dead concerts, buddy. Come yeah. on. 
But, uh, when this you is have a sports podcast. Hours, okay. Oh, oh yeah. Oh yeah. Okay. So what, dude? So I think <sighs> zip it, Owsley. So, so yeah. So I think I think some power sports and even field sports can benefit from doing it a little bit further out from from their peak. So sixteen weeks out, I think it it can like even bodybuilders, uh, strong men. Uh, will will benefit from it. Now, if I was a field, if I was somebody like field hockey or lacrosse, where there's a little bit more running, uh, re- relatively compared to football, let's say, I think you could do a little bit later. If I'm an endurance athlete, like I'm thinking about uh, 800, not not that 800 meters is not an endurance event, but I look at it like there's a volume of LSD work, so you want to do like a large volume of it pretty far out and then you're still going to maintain a decent volume maybe eight to ten weeks out and then that's what you're going to cut as you lead into your peak because for an 800 meter runner they're just running two laps around the the track basically as fast as they can so it turns into a little bit of a combo of sprint interval training and high intensity interval training so to answer your question it really is dependent upon the sport i think because I believe that you should do it more cyclical. It should be, uh, uh, you know, like a arm. This, this erg, is your assault bike type of thing. Assault bike, a rower, rower, ski erg. I think it's a lot easier on your body, and you reap the same benefits than if you would go out running. I think where you can get the running in is doing sprints up a hill. Um, so now you're getting into the high intensity stuff more. Yeah, or sprint interval training on the hill. High intensity interval training to me on a hill would be like dumbbell snatch, five on each arm, then sprint, then jog back down. Here's a silly question. Why is sprint interval training not high intensity interval training? Like what is the difference? Sprint interval training would be like ten seconds at ninety to ninety five percent of your max and then like 50 seconds rest. So it's more like an alactic threshold type yeah. of mindset. High intensity interval training would could be like uh using like a fart lick on the track where you would be like sprint 100 meters, jog 100 meters, sprint 100 meters, jog 100 meters, do that for 20 minutes. Okay. So it's a little bit more endurance based with high intensity. I hear you there. My new favorite thing that I started doing like once maybe twice a week is kettlebell stuff. Yeah just it i can do like an olympic style movement but have more of a flow to it so m- there's it's harder to rest and the grip work is just fun really good yeah. yeah yeah and i i think you could do both high intensity and sprint based with kettlebells yeah i love it I, i'm just i'm sure there's other kettlebell people out there but to me, and I, I want to bring this up to you, if a wrestler is not using a kettlebell... They, they, they really... I mean, dude, even if they just use it for freaking warm-ups, it's yeah. so good. Yo, five minutes straight with this. We're going to do these five flows. Yeah, and you don't even have to go that heavy, too, with it. Right. It's fun going with a heavy kettlebell. Right. Man, what is the heaviest kettlebell you have at the gym? You one, have a massive 150. one. 150. Yeah. Yeah. Have you ever tried to, like, do swings Swing with that? Yeah, we've done... Sw- I did 15 swings with it. 15, that's it? You want me to do 30? I'll do 30 in video. Do 31. You know what? You should start doing... <laughs> you should do 33 for the big 33 game or something silly something like that. Something stupid, yeah, yeah. I could do that. Especially... And you should have to do the amount of sets for every athlete you get in the game. It, well, that would be awesome. The hard part with that thing is how wide it is with your feet. You have to, you have to like... Dude, have you ever seen you walk? <laughs> You make videos making fun of how wide that your is feet true. are out. That is true. And you make an excuse like that. It's just really wide. That's what she said. <laughs> I'm not used to it being that wide. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So keep going with well, your hit to, stuff. To answer, this is why I wanted to share like a little personal anecdote. It's like, you know, I shared with you about burning 500 calories in 30 minutes. Yeah. So I figured out the tempo that I have to hold. <clears throat> If I hold 67 RPMs for every six minutes, I'll get 500 calories in 30 minutes, which, you know, it's not that hard for a CrossFitter, but for a normal, a normal dude, that's, that's tough. Yeah. So what I'm doing is two days of LSD, you know, in the one day I'm going to push the one day I'm just going to go like 60 RPMs easy, but then I'm doing 
uh, two other workouts where I'm going to go 10 minutes, one on sprint, one off, like nothing. One on sprint, one off. So that's like the sprint But interval. what's your sprint up at? Like what's the number? 90 RPMs. It has to be at 90 As RPMs. hard as I can, yeah. For a minute. Yeah. And then come back down. For 10 minutes. You want to do five rounds of that with a minute of recovery. 10. 10 rounds. So 20 yeah. minutes. So with today only a minute I did, of recovery. Today I did three minutes of that. And by the time I was at like seven minutes, I was only hitting 76. Yeah. Because I was dying. Yes. That, but to be fair to me, I had also done two six-minute rounds at 67 RPM. Did I communicate that through my voice when I like raised it up to you? Like, are you crazy? Like, yeah. Well, yeah. Th- but here's the thing. Then what I'm trying to do is have my sprint side here, my high-intensity side, which will be I'm trying to get six minutes at 67 five minutes at 70 which i can do already Uh uh-huh and this is in the same workout four minutes up at like 73 so i'm trying to lengthen i'm trying to take the sprint interval side and lengthen that that i'll never hit that 90 but i i think i could hit 76 to 80 rpms for like four minutes and if i can do that i believe that then i will be able to carry over yeah the 67 rpms easy because i can hold 67 rpms for about 15 minutes right now but it's just lengthening that out over that time. I even think I could, in theory, get to the point where I hold 70 RPMs for 30 minutes. How does the 67 being held for 15 <laughs> impact the next day? Or two See, that's days what after I'm still that. trying to figure out because I, I, can't, I can't really decide because I've only been home now for about two, two weeks. So, like, I don't know if I'm still just getting back in shape because I didn't work out for a while when I was traveling. I, I've been noticing a little bit of hamstring cramping and stuff but then i was i also did a single leg workout on sunday so like i I can't really answer that yet i want to challenge you to start using the kettlebell for some of your high intensity stuff too i would do that i think you'd have fun with it yeah well i've been do i've been really playing around with the hydro weight for some of that stuff too you love your hydro weight dude i've been doing really really slow stuff that is killing me and the hydro yeah and feels good do you feel the slow stuff ties into like lsd type of work because it's so controlled that way or i I think it's like combining lsd because i i put a 10 minute timer on and i do it i think it's a little bit of that a little bit of stability work and it's like mobility flows it's like a active i just feel like a good athlete when i'm done doing it it i honestly i'm like this could be like the best warm-up for football teams for wrestlers like that's what i'm playing around with it like dude i want to meet i want to make flows for sports i got gotcha. based off of this because i've i just feel areas that i'm like i could go do this exercise and or this sport and i would crush it that's if I, cool if i was a good athlete so through these flows like the warm-up things there's something that came to my mind as you were describing that um you ever listen to the band earth yeah and how they Brrr. right they play like metal if yeah, you will it's, like it's, it's country metal. tinge yeah. but it's it's super slow yeah and like kind of the difficulty of playing at a slow pace yes versus playing at what's your typical rhythm or yeah you've trained so often to be fast that counterbalancing that like hey let's be slow and then what that impact is on something else it, or yes. how it does and it's, develops you i think that's a really good comparison oh wow that's what i'm here for I mean, <laughs> no, <laughs> I dude, sorry to be a pig, but it's also like sex. Like men think that with sex, it's a race to see who finishes first, you know, but it's the dudes. <laughs> what men are, is that? Is that the ones online? I, at least in me. Cell chat lines? <laughs> <laughs> but, it, but it's when you realize like the benefit of being patient and lasting a while that it's like, well, this is a really enjoyable experience. Man, you must have been hanging out with women or something all of a sudden. <laughs> <laughs> Instead of just like locker room talk about it or whatever goes on. Um, Want to go to the audience questions? Yeah, let's go. All right. Um, Jason had his pen up. He was about to write something. Yeah, yeah, you know, yeah. I think I'm going to tell on him. I'm going to tell Trevor that he did not even write on his board, and I'm upset. <laughs> yeah. uh, this is a... It's only two Ks. There's no C in this. Dude, I'm so jealous that you bought that hat. I'm so mad I didn't buy the hot dog hat. Why wouldn't you do these things? I, I just did The coquille, man, the coquille. I almost want to get that hat. 
They may, if they have one there next time I go, I'll pick one up. When are you going to go again? I, I, we have tickets sometime. We always, there's always tickets at yeah. some point. I don't know. I feel like there's games in September. I'll probably let you know if, yeah. if there's no one else. I'll be like, hey, what's up? This is Dick underscore Monster. <laughs> it's two Ks though. It's two Ks. This is from the Reddit. Um, hey guys, I want to build strength and athletic performance in my legs. How often should I train them? Every day. No, I'm kidding. I normally do squats, Bulgarian split squats, which are actually known as single leg squats. He didn't write that. I added that okay. in there. Um, leg press and calf raises on my leg day. Should I add, delete any exercises? Yeah, we're doing a peak strength video on should you leg press. That question reminded me. I, I Dude, for me, it's you, you get one like absolute strength day that you have to have a cleaner snatch in. You have to have a squatter or single leg squat. Uh, you got to do, I think, to if you are really asking a question of like the best that you could possibly do, three days a week, one is going to be a really heavy, like focus day. One's going to be a plyometric day. And then one day is going to be like dynamic speed day. For your legs. Yeah. You need to get three of them in. Yeah. Don't do what if, I do and train legs all the time. Right. And if we're talking straight question for that, yes. Yeah. Don't do that. It's rough. It's fun though too. This one's from the U. This is Mac Weber, YouTube person. What's your opinion on? Oh man, Gyrovoy K- K- KB Sport. I don't know what KB Sport is. Any other weight swing like mace? Oh, it's kettlebell swings. Uh, weight swing like mace or Bulgarian bags. Oh yeah, I, I didn't even a, know that one was in there. Yeah, good I job, a, Jason. I had a couple people asking me about the mace lately i think okay so i think odd object training like that i think all that stuff's fine it's the same stuff as the hydro weight i think my the reason why i like the hydro weight one i sell it so i want to make money off of it but two is like i can travel with it and it's so easy to travel uh and it's it because the water's moving you die when like you can feel your abs the next day from it I think the mace stuff is good. I think kettlebell stuff is way better. Um, I think Bulgarian bags are pretty good. I think one area that I've always struggled with is like, I look at stuff like kettlebell work. I can see kettlebell guys. Like, uh-huh. not guys like Pavel, but like, there's, you know, every goddamn Dre on Instagram who's, like, just super popular right now. That dude's y- yoked and strong because he also does, like, other lifts. And the kettlebell work transfers really well to lifts, like traditional resistance barbell work. I don't believe mace training does that same transfer. I just, I struggle to see it. And, like, I've always had sort of, like, a sour taste towards those guys because I've always been, like, Come on, like, I see what you're doing with the mace. And this is just me being negative. Like, yo, if you played football against, like, I always go back to this. If you're going to train your guys with a mace and I have my guys with a barbell, my dudes with a barbell are going to smash your guys with a mace. Do these maces, like, get heavier? Like, yeah, can you they, get, they, they can get heavier. Like, can you get a 150-pound mace or something like I think so. Absurd? I think so, yeah. And I, I think they're good, but I think the problem is we just get so lost in, like, using that thing for everything whereas i think if i ranked it like kettlebell and hydro weight are going to be here for like accessory work and for developing uh athletes and how to hip hinge and all that stuff and strength and like the mace is going to be a little bit lower that we're just going to tinker with here and there and i think that that's that would be my answer to it I, i i wouldn't i don't get infatuated with stuff like that i also don't get overly infatuated with it because it's hard to measure all right you know yeah, well, that, when we were talking about all the reflexive work and stuff like that, it feels like the mace ha- could have application yeah. in that element and be used some way there. But outside of that, it's like, what do you do with it? Well, I think that's my other argument is going back to the hydro weight, going back to bands. Like I can do reflexive work with bands. I can do reflexive work with hydro weights and I can travel with them. So if I'm if I've got throwers that are working on positions out of the back and they need a band, like dude, they can put that in their suitcase. Yeah, they couldn't put a mace or I mean a kettlebell. That's the, also the downfall. I do really like kettlebells. Yeah, and I was talking about that mainly because I know you have 
him down here. Yeah. You have wrestlers. You're big on grip strength. And, yeah. And the grip's great. It's the one thing I started doing because it's real easy for me to like, yo, I have 12 minutes. Yeah, I got to go. And I can crush my soul in 12 minutes yep. with a kettlebell yeah. through like the intensity thing. That's the only reason I even brought that up. Right. I apologize. No, that's okay. Bro. I still need to play with a hydro weight. I like them. Have, what happens when you fill it up with all the water? Does it just not work then? Because it doesn't swash back way, and forth. You should be the test. Oh man, then I'll Mason will be mad at me if I break it. Then. <laughs> <laughs> That'll be the test for next week's podcast. All right, all right, guys. So make sure that you like and you subscribe to Masters of Sport podcast. Click on that link down below. Head over to Peak Strength dot app if you want to pick up our sweet peak strength app until next time peace later